Let me return briefly to a question posed earlier. Mechanical work is done in pumping the liquid above equilibrium level. Where does it come from? I cannot answer this question here in full. Let it suffice to tell you that we are dealing here with a heat engine. The mechanical energy comes from the heat added at the light spot. An amusing demonstration of the same phenomenon again uses a bulb packed with rouge, but this one opens into a capillary. Light is beamed on a spot just below the capillary, and it produces a helium fountain. The phenomenon in this and the previous experiment has become known as the thermomechanical or the fountain effect. Below the lambda point, the superfluid component of liquid helium creeps up along the walls of its container in an extremely thin film. It is known as the Rollin film. This creeping film is a variety of superflow. It is difficult to make the film itself directly visible to you. To show it indirectly, we've put some liquid helium into a glass vessel. It is below the lambda point. There is no porous bottom in this vessel. The film rises along the inside wall and comes down along the outside, collecting in drops at the bottom. The thickness of this creeping film is only a small fraction of one micron and of the order of two to three hundred angstroms. Its speed, while small just below the lambda point, may reach a value as high as 35 centimeters per second at lower temperatures. Our next experiment deals with the phenomenon of second sound. We are all familiar with wave motion in elastic materials, be they solids, liquids, or gases. Elastic energy of deformation carried away from a source in the form of waves with a characteristic speed, the speed of sound. Liquid helium is an elastic substance, both above and below the lambda point. Both helium 1 and 2 support sound waves. Now, Helium-2, the superfluid phase, also conducts heat in the form of waves. This remarkable property is shared by no other substance. For better or for worse, it has been called second sound. Normal heat conduction is a diffusion process. The rate of flow of heat is proportional to the temperature differences. But in helium-2, it is a wave process. Heat flows through helium-2 with a characteristic speed, the speed of second sound. We shall send small heat pulses into helium-2 from a heater. They will spread away from the heater uniformly, carrying the heat energy with them. The speed of second sound is small, just below the lambda point. In the neighborhood of 1.6 degrees Kelvin, it reaches a value of roughly 20 meters per second and it is in this range that we will run our demonstration. The experimental procedure is as follows. There are two disks in the liquid helium. They are carbon resistors, with the carbon applied in thin layers on one side of each disk. In this way, good thermal contact is established between the resistor and the liquid helium. The bottom resistor will be used as a heater. Electric current will be sent through it in pulses from this pulse generator by means of the cable you see here. The output of the generator is also connected via a second cable to a dual trace oscilloscope where it will be recorded on the bottom trace. In other words, it will record the heat pulse as it enters the liquid helium. The pulses have been turned on. They themselves trigger the horizontal sweep of the trace which records time elapsed. It is calibrated at one millisecond per unit on the scale. The pulses are one millisecond long. The pulses leave the heater at the bottom in the form of second sound and move up to where they strike the carbon resistor at the top. Being heat pulses, they briefly raise its temperature. The carbon resistor is quite sensitive to changes in temperature. It acts as a thermometer.